No, they CC'd Len in as well. Oh, damn. <laughs> Okay, Cody, go. how many days is it until your birthday? It is five days until my birthday. Because the way you just stood up and went, oh, <laughs> okay, is unreal. You are too young to be making the oh noise <laughs> when you just stand up out of your chair. I regret it... that you weren't recording it because that was truly the most old man thing I have ever heard. <laughs> okay, to be fair, okay, we <laughs> did a we did a breast cancer workout. Sorry, it was before. Here's the new scruff ball. <laughs> oh, it's so cute! <laughs> Her name's Arizona, and she just loves licking. So she was licking everywhere <laughs> while I was trying to tell my story. Okay, and anyway. that somehow resulted in you aging 55 years. <laughs> exactly, I'm double father. <laughs> um, no, we did a workout for breast cancer over the weekend, so like it was a lot of leg stuff. So my legs are pretty much peg legs at the moment, that's why. So in for my breast defense. cancer, they were like, we know what workout people need. They need leg day. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly how it is. That's how you fix breast cancer. You just keep doing leg day. Leg day? Leg day. <laughs> That's why you shouldn't skip anyway. it. It's not for skinny legs. It's for breast cancer. Cody, how has a second <laughs> dog been? How has the puppy been? How has life with the puppy been? Yeah, life's been cool. Life's been interesting. Um, so... Like, uh, you know, we've been complaining for like episodes now about how difficult it is to get a dog. And then last week we literally said we were going to go see her. We got her, they came and viewed her and now she's living with us. So if you ever want to get a dog quickly, just go to the SPCA. You rescue a dog from the SPCA, you get a dog in a couple of days. It's perfect. It's great. They're all scruff balls, but hey, that is what it is, right? But anyway, yeah, she means I'll uh, last forever, like I said. Yeah, exactly. But they said she's two years old. Um, she was found on the side of the road, so they don't really know. But she acts more like a puppy than anything else, <laughs> so I don't really know. We think maybe a little bit under two, possibly, because she's had puppies of her own, so yeah. But other than that, cool. She's uh, getting used to all the new sounds around the house, so she barks a lot because everything, even Siggy walking into the house gets her upset, up, <laughs> upset excited. So she's uh, yeah, still getting used to things, but she's cool. She's nice. It's not that she's not a puppy puppy because she's pretty much house trained. I don't know where she learned that on the streets, but yeah, no wheeze in the house, no poos in the house. She sits I will almost say, instantly. If I ever get a second dog, it definitely won't be a puppy again. I'll definitely <laughs> go for like after the one year mark. Because yeah. Zeke is turning a year tomorrow. Yeah. And those first few months were rough. Eh? Like, <laughs> I don't know if I could do a puppy again. I was so triggered all the time. Mm-hmm. Yep, it's crazy. They just, they like, you need, you really need to teach them everything. Everything that you thought would just yep. be easy, it's not <laughs> easy. They take forever to figure stuff out. They're just chaos. They're super cute, but they're chaos. So, 100%. Yeah. 100%. And then having to let them out multiple times a night, then you don't mm -hmm. know. 100%. Getting one that's already past that is where it's at. I mean, you say that, but Siggy did wake me up at half past three this morning because he wanted to go for a week. <laughs> and I was just like, no, not now. I'm so tired. But anyway, it is what it is. But yeah, it's been cool. It's been lots of fun. It's, a, it's still something we need to play around with because she's a bit of an escape artist. So even though we've got all the fencing and everything going, hey, stop looking. Answering uh, she... the question on how did she end up on the streets? <laughs> yeah. There we go. 
So she can climb all the fencing and stuff. So we still have to juggle like at least one person being at home at all times. But just for a couple days, we'll get her to figure out that when we leave, we're not leaving forever. So <laughs> it's okay. But she's cute. So that's fun. <laughs> How's so, life been with one puppy? The worst, okay? It's been a rough week. So for starters, I think I mentioned last week that he stopped okay. eating and we had to go to the yes. vet and then the vet was like, there's nothing wrong with him. So mm -hmm. I have to home cook for him now. And oh, wow. we went to go and get some like pet nutritionist, home cooked pet food recipes. And that's what we're doing. And he eats that like the precious little human baby boy that he is. And he loves it. Mm -hmm. So that's fine. Of course. Then Saturday we go to the dog park. And I suppose it was bound to happen at some stage. But we just rolled the dice bad and another huge dog attacked him and bit him in his oh, face. No. So then we had to deal with that and it just it's been rough, right? And Shame. when was it like Friday night before the dog park even we were at a friend's house and we were discussing like how we have to cook food for him and it needs to be just for right temperature and in just for right <laughs> bowl and his food has blueberries in but there can't be too many blueberries and there can't be too few blueberries. Yeah. And the friend we were talking to actually has a human child and okay. was like, she doesn't have this much hassle with her human child. She just, she doesn't understand. And I was like, I don't know how uh -huh. you have a human child. I just have a dog child. And I'm like, this is enough for me. I do yeah. not have the capacity for a human one. Like, <laughs> no, I mean, you know, we're at, speaking of getting old, we're at that age now. Hey, just, can you? Now she's all tangled up <laughs> in the cable. Okay, it's just going to be a chaotic thing. We're at that age now where people are always like, when are you going to have kids? You know what I mean? And we yep. always are like, uh, you know, like we're not, uh, we're not like trying to have kids. If we have a kid, we have a kid. But so we're not for it, but we're not against it. But we always say like, life is so lifey like if you had to throw a baby <laughs> in the middle of things right, right now it would be so chaotic i don't know how these people are doing it can barely get through the day without and then we have now. like such a makeup job like we play games for a living <laughs> it's not even like a big boy job like i don't understand how these people do it it's crazy it's ridiculous but yeah like anyway, just, we'll stick with this like, for now talking about like ages and stuff like i mean I was around. I distinctly remember my parents' 30th birthday. Meaning, I was old enough to literally be aware and remember their 30th. And I can't yeah. imagine now having even a baby, let alone a kid yeah. old enough to remember my birthday. To remember. It's, like, it's insane yeah. for me. Yeah, it's crazy. I can even it's tell crazy. you what my dad received for his 30th birthday. That is wow. how much I remember him turning 30. Jeez. I mean, I was around, but I don't have a memory like that. So good for you. I think that's more of a testament to how good your memory is. More than. No. Okay. I think my parents just had me young. But still, the point is I have distinct memories. I remember it and it's freaking crazy. I mean... I was probably like eight or something when my parents you turned You should be 30. able to remember that. Yeah, that's what I mean. I don't remember squat. That's what I'm saying. Your memory is pretty what? good. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how to explain it better than that. I just don't remember a single thing. Nothing. I remember I my mom's trip a... yet. That's it. <laughs> when was that? Like three months ago? You're like, oh, yes, I remember. I don't know. It was recent. <laughs> uh, but but anyway, I saw you were still having a good time crazy. with Zeke. In the pool. Yeah, no, he's great. We decided because he was just like, it's so hard, right? So like the other dog grabbed him, literally attacked him. It was a huge thing. 
But then you don't instantly want to leave the dog park, right? Because you also don't want him now to be scared of all dogs and think all dogs yeah. are going to attack him. Yeah. So then we like awkwardly like hung around for dog park and was like, play with the other dogs. And then uh-huh. I bought him a swimming pool because again, we are parents. <laughs> Lol, this is amazing. This is making my whole day. <laughs> but we bought him a dog swimming pool, mm-hmm. which 10 out of 10, I recommend if you don't have an actual pool. And cool. then filled that up and he was swimming in his pool and living his best life. Yeah, that sounds ideal. When I was looking at those photos, I was going to message you to send me a link for that pool thing. Because I need a pool. It's on I'm literally... Take A Lot and it's literally like 400 Rand. Okay, yeah, it sounds ideal. Because, jeez, it is so hot. I don't know how Pretoria yep. is. It must be like 5 degrees Boiling. Hotter. But I'm sweating and with this green screen on now it's just like cornered me into like a little yep. hot house here it's ridiculous it also is ridiculous. i have to close my freaking curtains each time we record because otherwise the sunlight is so bright on this half of my face that it's literally <laughs> just white like i don't have eye i don't have anything it's just white but yeah, no, it's killing me. The worst is when you try and sleep at night because mm. where our house is, especially, there is no wind. It is just like not even a breeze. Then at night, you can sleep with the entire house open. The doors open, the windows open, everything. And there's just nothing. It's just hot. Mm-mm, that sounds terrible. At least like our house it was designed if you open the back and the front like the wind blows right through it which is nice but the office is yeah just a hot house i don't understand it's somehow stuck in a place in why the do house. we always pick the hottest freaking rooms to have be our office yeah like to always, spend no like 90 no percent of no the day no matter where my parents have lived hottest room we're always. like this this is going to be either your bedroom or your office <laughs> I don't know. Humans I also feel weird. like, I don't know if you've ever had this struggle, but any house I've ever lived with in my life, the Wi Fi is always the worst in the bedroom. So I had that problem, and then I specifically went and just cabled the whole house because I knew I was like, this is bound to happen. Wherever I want <laughs> to put stuff that needs internet is going to be terrible. <laughs> So I just put what cables everywhere. That's the only way I could solve it. So at least I did that. But yeah. Just yeah, something no, that about is humans. when you own the house stuff. <laughs> One day. I'm not committing there. for a rental like that. So we'll see in December. Along Fair with enough. the aircon dreams, but we won't get into that again. I don't know. I'm leaning, I'm just going to get a portable one. I think I'm just going to find one that I can take with me. When I buy that swimming pool, I'll see if there's like a dog <laughs> aircon that I can just buy as well. To save so time. I got dog aircons. They are dog aircons. I bought one for my rabbit and I bought one for Zeke when he was a puppy last year. But they're okay. like really small little portable ones. And I mean... It's fine if you put it like on your desk and you have it blowing okay. just on your face. But it's not great. Like it's not going to cool the room. It will cool you yeah. if you're directly in front of it. And that's about it. At this rate, like I'm willing to put the dog pool under my <laughs> desk and just sit there with like oh, an hundred percent. So mm. on, um, when was it? I think Sunday. It was just super hot. And Larry and I were in the lounge and I was like, look, I'm not even kidding, but how great would it be if we take the dog pool, put it in the lounge and we just sit in it and watch TV because yeah. that's really the dream of what I want to do. Cold water, sounds fantastic. me sat in it watching TV. Like I... we'll deal with the consequences if something goes wrong, but that is my dream day. <laughs> I can't imagine a better Sunday. That sounds like... And because I spent basically the whole Sunday watching the end of the League of Legends world Swiss stage, it would have been perfect. Just like snacks over here, pool (laughs) over here, TV on. Oh, yeah. Sounds like magic. Based. Yeah. Um, But talking about League 
and worlds and all of those things. So a question was asked in the WhatsApp group this week by our editor and it's sort of been in my mind since because we're nearing like end of the year. What would you say has been your favorite games of this year? Favorite games of this year. So I mean that question can be interpreted differently, right? Is it the fa- the best games yeah. that I've played no, this year or the best games be of the year? Your favorites of the year. So e- whether you played it this year or whether it came out this year, I don't really care. Mm. But what was your gaming highlights? Well, I mean there are a few, so I'll go with the easy one, which is an oldish game. Um but I enjoyed it because it took me back to like playing on the handheld again, which was Children of Morta. Um, it was just so nice because I got to play it wherever, you know, when I had the claw with me. So I could yeah. play in bed or on the couch, doesn't matter where we were in the car. Like, and I just like, it's kind of like the perfect game for handheld consoles. Those kinds of games are perfect. And just like, it brings me back to when I was eight years old at my mom's 30th birthday. And I was probably playing Game Boy instead of remembering what her birthday party was like. So I really enjoyed that. And there's been some cool games like Dragon's Dogma was very impressive. Just the way they like made the whole combat Climbing system Climbing up enemies was yeah. my favorite thing. I'm it's not going to just... lie, like very little wows me with games that come out. Like these cool things, but you're not like, wow, that's great. Why does every game not do it? But yeah. when in Dragon's Dogma, you could just scale a freaking dragon, climb on top of its head and like wail down on its head was yeah. great. It was such a fun concept. I truly don't understand exactly. why more games that have epic, like huge creatures that you fight don't allow you to climb onto them, hang onto them. That was great. Yeah, it was very cool. It was like they made the creatures a part of the terrain kind of thing you know it was just it was such a cool gaming experience that you don't get that often in games like you said so that was cool yeah and there's a few other games like Stellar Blade I really enjoyed it I mean there was so much hype about it and then there was the whole like fan service part of it that everyone was talking about but the game is actually like a lot of fun to play I mean the story is a bit flat but the gameplay is cool so when you just want to sit down and enjoy some cool combo moves, why not? Just go ahead and do it. It was fun. <laughs> also, like, I like and I agree with what you said about the, like, handheld thing for Children of Mordor. I was busy telling Larry, I feel like a lot of people that review handhelds or talk about handhelds or get a handheld are always like oh what big triple a title games can i run can it run cyberpunk can it run grand theft auto 5 but for me that's not the beauty of a handheld right yeah like if i want to play cyberpunk i want to be sat in front of my pc with my big ass monitor or my tv screen enjoying it in the biggest best shiniest way possible right yeah for sure like for me the beauty of a handheld are the small little games like children of mortar that i can now lie on the couch and play while larry watches anime or i can yeah. have in the car with me or i can exactly. even take on like a road trip like the holiday we're going on to play in the car or play like on a stormy day when you don't want to be on the beach like it's yeah. those small titles that just shine on handheld 100 percent and like when you're playing cyberpunk you know you probably invest hours and hours in one day yeah when you have a handheld it's like you get in you can play for an hour or two and then you're like okay cool and then you go and do something else or whatever and you can come back hundred percent it's it's a completely different gameplay style so yeah i agree with you not everything needs to run triple a games why do you think people still buy PlayStation 1s and retro consoles, you know what I mean? Because, yep. like, it's that different gameplay feel that you get when you have a handheld in your hand. That's versus... also why I feel like you could have a handheld, a PC, and a console. Because sure. it's different platforms shine for different things. It's just the yeah. reality. Like, 100%. 
It, and like, yeah, it works. I mean, even playing on controller versus keyboard and mouse, completely different experience. You can play the same game, but it will be different playing on those two different things. So, yeah. But what I will your say so. I was been? always. Oh. Okay, just interrupt. Me. No, so I was just going to say, like, growing up, I was always like a mouse and keyboard, mouse and keyboard. <laughs> And then when we did that controller roundup and we started playing on the Razor Wolverine, I am so depressed when I go into <laughs> a game now and they don't have controller support. It literally feels like it ruins my day. Like in my mind, I was reclining on my gaming chair, kicking back, relaxing. And now you're telling me that, oh no, I have to sit up close and play on a mouse and keyboard if I'm upset. Like, anyway, I am a convert controller for life. It's great. Nice. But favorite games of the year, honestly, like I was busy checking a post on Zaga like two or three days ago. Okay. And as gaming communities often are, everybody was like, there's nothing worth playing this year. This year sucks. <laughs> there's been no good games. And I feel like it's been such a fun year for gaming. Like, so for indie games, there have been really great indie games. I mean, I keep talking about it, but like Dungeons of Hinterburg. It's mm -hmm. a small little indie game, but we larry and i played it through from beginning to end three times so that we could 100 percent the game because yeah, that is how much fun it game. was it yeah, was great that's a game i love those i mean the silent hill 2 remake obviously not for you but <laughs> just absolutely spectacular there is not one thing in that game that i was like oh you know they really screwed up i wish they did that differently it took an already like great game from my childhood and made it spectacular what a great experience what a great game i mean we've had good expansions we've had good it's been a good year for gaming like i don't know i think people take gaming far too seriously like oh, yeah. i was reading a post to larry about star wars outlaws yeah and people were complaining about the game and somebody in the comments was like explain to me like i am a child why did you not like the game and the original poster was like because it is unrealistic i don't appreciate the fact that the main protagonist can punch a stormtrooper three times and take it down it's just not realistic and then someone responded and was like hang on a moment in a game with the existence of stormtroopers and it's set in space you are complaining mm -hmm. about a three punch being able to take someone down not being realistic that's where you draw the line like yeah. you are ridiculous and i was like 100 percent. if that is truly your biggest complaint you are a ridiculous person yeah. you were never gonna and like the game no matter what they did because you're just looking for reasons to not like the game 100 percent. you're just like riding on that internet cloud where everyone's like oh this game sucks and you're like yeah i agree this game sucks i mean games were made to have fun right like we're, we're killing some time to have yep. a good time <laughs> why are we so serious about games all the time like some maybe sometimes let a game have a couple of bugs i mean we grew up in the era where we always say it wasn't a bug it's a feature they were right? features exactly <laughs> exactly so like we're used to it and I, I i don't understand how there are so many people because i feel like everyone that's playing games is pretty much our age now you know everyone that's younger is only playing fortnite or four guys or something like that anyway so why are we so upset about games all the time just play a game and have fun if you're not having fun playing the game play a different game like that's fine just you know it so i I have a theory. I feel like it's because gaming has been popularized. So everybody under the sun, if they've played even a single game, is like, I'm a gamer. And because I'm a gamer, I'm allowed to have an opinion. 
Okay. So Fine. you get people who only ever play cod which is fine you're a cod player but now they want to weigh in about the realism of star wars outlaws calm down <laughs> it's not for you it doesn't have to be for you like it's not even like I cod is that it. realistic anyway <laughs> but it's always for cod guys like come on <laughs> you know i'm right it's always for cod guys uh just because cod's so popular we need to popularize something else. Let's get indie game, like one major indie game title so popular that everyone no, is just so, cozy about So things. that's where I'm getting at, right? So if you have a look, like I would say people who predominantly play indies are more real gamers. Like okay. they just mm -hmm. play and enjoy all games. But if you go and have a look through the comments on indie games, it's always so positive. They're yeah. always like, this is so great. This is so nice. Thank you for including this game. Thank <laughs> you for making this game. I love this game. Like it's the sweetest part of the internet every single yeah. time for sure. Like, and they're like, this game was only three hours so long. Thank it's you so much. Exactly. They love it. Everything. And you know, if a game does have a bug, they're always like, it did have a few bugs, but I'm sure it will be fixed. Like, it's always such an uplifting part of the gaming industry. And then you see a post and they're like, uh, I don't like Silent Hill 2 because the one woman isn't hot. How can I play the game? My eyes. And you're like, can't can't with you that game was too realistic need to find a nice balance <laughs> but it is like i don't know it's it's ridiculous and the bandwagon thing is for sure true though so like we have a friend and we were visiting her from this weekend yeah. and he was also because i gave him a copy of a nag magazine and he was like "Ugh, why did you put outlaws on the cover and I was like, well, A, it was for the interview and it came out before the game. And B, the game was actually pretty good. Have you played it? And he was like, no, he hasn't played it. And he's not going to spend his money on it because X, Y, Z on YouTube said it was crap. So it's crap. And I was like, okay, but have you tried it because you yeah. actually like star wars games and you like this type of game and he was like no xyz said it was crap so it was crap and i was just like i don't understand that that's that is the definition of just bandwagoning for me like i don't get it what are you talking yeah. about i also don't i mean like i Your know friends we do it for are a telling living. you it's cool just try just try but I mean, we do it for a living as well. Like we review games and we can say it's good or bad. But at the end of the day, it's up to you to play you the game and decide. It. Exactly. 100%. Exactly. We're just there I to give, give our an opinion. opinion. Yes. And I think that's based. Like there's so many reviewers that I follow because i know based on historics that their opinion on games especially board games really aligns with mine so mm -hmm. if they're like this is a great game chances are i'll enjoy it if they're like this game sucks chances are i'll think it sucks but even there i loathe when they do their year in review videos because 50 percent of the games that they're like these were the best games of the year suck for me and i'm like <laughs> this is a shelf of shame game i bought it it sits there and i'll never play it again because it sucks oh, because man. unfortunately that is how it's gonna be you are never going to 100 percent agree with someone else and the thought that like some random youtuber that you've never even met and you know nothing about can be like outlaws sucked and you're like i will never play this game i will never support it because they said it sucked is wild for me yeah especially when it's a, a franchise you love and a game genre that you enjoy playing like it just i don't know people will be weird i have said this like 15 times this episode people are just weird <laughs> That's like when you told me that like the chocolate stary stumpy tasted bad. 
I wasn't like, <laughs> I will never drink chocolate Sterry Stumpy. The next day that I went to the store, I was like, chocolate Sterry Stumpy, I will buy it and taste it. And it was fine. Cody is wrong. For everybody <laughs> out there, it is absolutely fine. <laughs> he bought a weird off-brand one. But chocolate Sterry Stumpy is fine. <laughs> okay. I'll go and buy another chocolate stir stump <laughs> just so we can see. Because now we have to, we just but have to check if it was one like bad batch. I feel like around where your house is, you can buy no dairy <laughs> products. So you need to travel. Next time you come to Pretoria, buy a chocolate stir stumpy. But now I have to drive so far to get a chocolate milkshake. That sounds ridiculous. <laughs> I'd rather buy any other flavor than drive all the way to Pretoria for a chocolate milkshake. No. But I'm just saying, fact of the matter remains, people are ridiculous when it comes to gaming. And this year has actually been a pretty good gaming year. I think so. I feel like most years are. Even when they're like dull, there's still like a couple good games that you get. And then even still, there's like DLCs, like you said, that just enhance other games that you have already played. So yeah. gaming's generally a good space to be in, generally. Okay, and but on that note, before Cody? before I sweat to death, it? yes, I'm going to die in this heat what? cubicle. Please, please. My shirt <laughs> is literally sticking to me. Can we just... Let's do it. So, before we do the final, I have a fear. So, uh -oh. you guys can't see it, but I want you to imagine. I am sat on my leather gaming seat with shorts. Mm -hmm. And I know that later on I'm going to stand up and it is going to be like the worst waxing experience of your life. I am not only going to lose every back of my leg hair that I have, but a mm -hmm. layer of skin as well. I hate that. Like I know it, I, I feel it. I have a towel on my chair for those exact reasons. Like, I'm that old person that puts doilies on things. I have a thing <laughs> covering my chair. Because <laughs> I hate that. I can't. I don't care that you can't see how pretty the chair looks. I'm worried about my skin sticking to the chair when I have to get off. So... <laughs> there you go. Quick I will say, hack. that is always the worst. Like, years ago, when I used to travel around a lot for work, when it's summer and you get into your car and you have leather seats mm -mm. oh the absolute agony of that i can't i'll never buy a car with leather okay, seats because so. of that <laughs> <laughs> it's the worst it's the worst okay so guys thank you so much for watching if you want to hear more of the great, insightful, and entertaining ramblings of Ariel, Cody, and some other people every now and then, you can head on over to www.nag.co.za. You can also head on over to shop.nag.co.za to pick up the latest, while it is still the latest, issue of the NAG magazine, because we are currently busy wrapping up the next issue of the NAG magazine so mm -hmm. go pick it up you don't want to be behind like that's ridiculous i mean you also need for star wars cover so you can look at it and be like i'm not gonna play star wars she's not pretty enough <laughs> okay where else can they get us uh, if you guys are bored of www.nag.co.za you can rather find us on social media where we have accounts on x Twitter, Facebook, Threads, Instagram, LinkedIn, I missed that one, YouTube, uh, Ayoba, and TikTok. I think I covered everything over there. So we have all you our did. videos, all our posts, everything going up there. Feel free to follow us and enjoy all the contact, contact, content, interact with us, and uh, yeah, we'll tell some jokes, have a good time. You can also jump to our Discord. Our Discord has some stuff going on there, so feel free to look us up or drop a comment. And below. a weekly camel race. Which There's a I weekly camel race. For some strange reason. I don't even get the <laughs> point of the camel race. I don't know why I'm participating in camel races. I don't know why camel races exist, but it's a thing that happens. Exactly. You don't get that anywhere else. So feel free to jump <laughs> in and join us. 
Um, otherwise, you can drop us an email at hey at nag.co.za where we will read everything you send and probably respond with just one or two words because that's how we roll. Or you can drop us a WhatsApp on our business line, which is 062-834-1919. And that's everything. I will say now that you mentioned, like we'll probably respond with two or three words because that's how we roll. For somebody <laughs> who is literally paid to write things, I sure hate responding to messages and emails. <laughs> like so often I'll get this long message from like a family member or something. And then I'm just like, thumbs up. Thumbs up emoji. 